Hi guys and welcome to Coffee with a Chance of Meatballs. It's me, your host, Meatball Molly. This is brought to you by Creative Anvil Marketing, Eminent Recruitment and CBDWorldOnline.com. And today I've got an amazing guest coming on. She is Miss West Belfast herself, Christine Frampton. What is, girl? What about you? Oh, I'm loving that intro, Miss West Belfast. That's a new one. <laughs> that sounds like the beauty queen, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we've just had a brief little chat just before we started recording and uh, the listeners can hear and the viewers can watch, but tell us how you've been getting on in lockdown. Have you been just battling Carl every day? I can't really complain. Like There's been up days and down days. We've been homeschooling and all the rest of it, but I feel really lucky. Like We've had good weather. We've been out in the garden. We've been able to walk around. You know, there's there's people a lot worse off than us at the minute, so... I really don't want to complain about the situation because we're all in the same boat. That's it, yeah. I like I've I've seen the same. Carl's been having a good go about training still in the back garden. My best bit was on Twitter where he was like, "Did he have a kettlebell or something?" And you was like lifting the can up every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's quality that way. Do you just get pissed in the garden and watch him train? Most days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only joking. Yeah. At the weekend, do you know what? It's hard, and in, in the sun, it feels sort of like should we be on our summer holidays at the minute? But yeah. you know, the kids have been getting that much schoolwork, so we'll be Monday to Fridays. We've been sticking to it, and then at the weekends, and just enjoying hot, it, living your best life. I was literally yeah. saying to my mum in the car before I said, if we didn't have this good weather, this lockdown oh. would have been fucked off. Like a right at the beginning, no one would have stuck to it, would they? No, not even that. But it just would have been so much more depressing imagine yeah. sitting no shops open no nothing no where to socialize and bad weather at the same time it rough. would have been a lot worse mm-hmm. rough so i brought you onto the podcast today um just to talk about the different perspective of what it's like for the for the family and for the wife and for the partner of a fighter yeah. and basically without it being too formal and like scripted I just want you to tell me how you went from a young girl in West Belfast to going to university to learn how to be a grass. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. How, studying criminology, meeting Carl and having a family. And then I'll get into some good questions. But if you just take take us all on a little journey of, of your little life at the beginning. Sort of happened. It all sort of fell together. So I met Carl sort of in the summer between finishing school and going to uni. So I was already planning on doing what I was doing. I knew what I was getting to university to do, and then I met him. He was already boxing at quite an elite level. He was on the high-performance team, the Irish high-performance team, so he was training like four days a week in Dublin and travelling the world for really um, difficult tournaments. Yeah. So it was sort of, it took us a while, actually. It took about a year and a half from when we first met for him to actually ask me out. Did he? So, yeah, a year and a half. Was, like, he, a shit, like, was he a shit bag or was he just too busy? It was, it was, no, he was a shit bag. Like, was we were, he? Talking, <laughs> we're talking every single day. Like, he used to even talk to my mummy on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and she actually called him her son-in-law before he even asked me out. Really, yeah. Because <laughs> we talk so much, yeah. He was just a shit bag. But then when he did, so I was already in uni and stuff when we started going out, and it just sort of fell into place. Like he was in Dublin four days a week, come home at the weekends. I was studying, and we used to see each other at the weekends, and then just get back into normal life. Yeah. So it was just natural and progressed naturally. Just natural, progressed naturally, and then whenever I graduated, had he turned What year? Yet? What year did you graduate in? So I'd done three years in criminology, criminal just that that was What, what was the date though? The date was fuck do you know I can't even remember. I was like twenty one. <laughs> so I'm thirty two now, whatever year that was. Twenty twenty, six away eleven. Two thousand nine. Yeah, about that. Is that right? I can't even count either, who knows? But let's just go I, let's roll on that, two thousand and nine. Yes, about two thousand and nine it must have been. So I graduated. He turned pro, I think that year after I graduated. So I was working full time in retail in a clothes shop, volunteering at the weekends, custody visiting, basically uh, 
visiting people who had been arrested to make sure they knew their rights and stuff. How was that? Every weekend. It was frightening because I was still a young girl. I, mean, you know, I, bet, I, I bet you were seeing some stuff as well, like... It, yeah, yeah, I used to shit myself because it was the weekends as well. That's when the police stations are so busy. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I thought I need the experience to get my foot in the door for criminal justice. So I did it. Um, done that for about a year, year and a half while working as well. Yeah. And then Carla, our daughter, came along. <laughs> 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 yeah, she was like, surprise. <laughs> yeah. um, so she was a pleasant surprise whilst you, you're trying to get into criminal justice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so when you was getting to that point, um, and you you realised right, I'm gonna be a mummy, eh? and mm-hmm. um, how hard? When when Carl's in camp, how hard is that on you before you even had Carly? When it was just you but, and him. Well, before that, it was basically just loneliness, and that's all you're dealing with is loneliness. You know, life. It wasn't really hard, but then when you have kids, like your whole everything changes your whole outlook so everything for me changed especially because i wanted my food in the door of the day i wanted to work in the prison yeah then i was like well i have a child now i live in northern ireland that's a dangerous job yeah changed everything for the both of us then at that minute because it was like well what am i going to do now what i've been working towards has changed yeah so at that point you know i was working in retail we were paying childcare. Carl was had just turned pro, so it was like the money was yeah, give. and the money something is not great, is it? Yeah, something had to give. So I sort of thought, well, maybe I should give something up here to let him have a go. Yeah, and that's what we did. Yeah, was it easy? No, no. Because like, say, me and my relationship and my partner Paige. Yeah. We are like, she was a professional footballer and me fighting. Sometimes it was really hard to get the balance right. Do you know what I mean? Because we're both chasing, yeah, and we're both chasing our dream. And then, and then we've had to take a break and had to take a step back so that one person can just get there yeah. and then and then and then come back together, kind of thing. But it's quite selfless what you've done. Do you know what I mean? You sort of have to, um, I think find a way to do it as well and and remember yourself like that you can't resent that person because we made the choice together i know if i'd have said the card no i'm going to do the job that i want to do you would have let me yeah of course you know I mean? yeah, yeah 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 so i would never hold it against them like and i know one day i'll do it you'll go back to it 100 percent. i speak to leah mccourt all the time and she's like studying law like after she finishes fighting she's like i want to be it like uh, i was wondering that because she said she does her own contracts and stuff yeah. i was like how is she doing that yeah so, yeah, so she she manages it herself and um mm. what's it Same. called yeah and then she what she do she has someone to help with like um like sponsorships and stuff but she manages her own contracts which i thought fearful can play because that's not easy that's not an easy <laughs> draw do you know what, I mean? you know what? If you can do it and trust yourself to do it, it's the best way to go, I suppose. I know, because you're only going to get bumped otherwise, aren't you? <laughs> and you use a living proof of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> I know, sorry. Off topic, off topic. So, when you decided to give up your career for Carl to, to follow his own, how, how quick of a turnaround was it until he started providing the life that you live kind of now when things were comfortable was was it a long time christine of like struggle or was it quite a quick turnaround um i would say it wasn't until maybe like we got married and had rosa how old is he now two so he's five. Oh, five. Five. so i would say around the time he was born we were comfortable in our lifestyle yeah so Carla's nine, Ross is five. Five-y. So from she was born until he was born, basically, was the was tough it time. Long? Yeah. Yeah, because it was kind of just like over. It wasn't an overnight sensation by any means, but no, no. But but then it just. I just remember when he came on the scene. I remember my old boxing coach, Yubi, he was like, "Have you seen that Frampton?" And I was like, 
I think I have. He was like, he's the one with the tattoos on his arms. He, and I was like, oh, I have seen him. But I think this is when he was... I'm not sure if he just won his first title and he was starting to make a bit of a name for himself with McGuigan. And, the, and yeah. I think that's when he's kind of blew up for just people who weren't really interested in boxing. He started to make a bit of a name and, and things was I getting think, out there like that, weren't you? I think a lot of it as well is just this whole story, like us being in a mixed marriage and stuff. Yeah, because yeah, I was going to I was gonna come to that in a minute. What is it like? Because people in England and... Like, my nan is Irish, my nan's from Bray, and I knew growing up, I've got family in Garver and Coleraine, so I know what it's like, and my family are all Catholic, so we know what it was like growing up, but people who are my age still in England haven't got a clue about the troubles or anything that went on, do you know what I mean? And it's madness. But for you two, when you got together, is it hard... Does it does it still happen now or at the beginning when you'd probably get trolls or people would be like, was you ever threatened about it or anything like that? Was well, it... I mean, nothing serious. We've had trolls, obviously, saying stuff, but we've never felt, like, literally in under threat. Or anything in like that, yeah. injury, yes, because we know, like, the community I grew up in, the community car I grew up in, we know we're safe. Yeah. And the people around us are always going to keep us safe. Do you yeah. know what I mean? But... Yeah. Obviously, years ago, like our relationship living here wouldn't have happened. Really? 30 years ago. Really? Yeah, it just yeah. wouldn't have been allowed. Yeah. So we feel sort of lucky in that way. And it is something that I think a lot of people, a lot of people support Carl. Obviously, they support him for what he's achieved, but also just because of his story and because he appeals to both sides of the community and they can both come, both sides can come together and watch him fight. Yeah. And they do know they're safe. Yeah. And they do, don't they? Yeah, they do. And they all sing together and dance together and have a good time. And, and that's what it's all about. It is. I remember when... Um, it's not the Free Arena. What's It's the Odyssey. Is it the Odyssey? Uh, uh, it's called the SSE. Oh, the yeah, SSE, yeah. yeah. What, was yeah. it called the Odyssey, though? Was it, it was, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I remember... I'm sure... I'm sure I'd seen him fight there before, but it, like... He was, like... I remember growing up and it was Ricky Hatton was the big thing and he had like the fans would follow him everywhere but then yeah. Carl was like the next big thing wasn't he and it was just the atmosphere when he fights is just electric for you on fight night what are your nerves like because I see it with my partner Paige or with my mum and my family I'm trying to get in the zone I'm not thinking about their feelings and what they're going through but I can just see my mum doesn't eat for like a week she has nightmares and she thinks I'm going to die when I go and I'm fighting. I'm like, fucking hell, mum, you can't be like having them thoughts, yeah. do you know what I mean? No, you can't, but it's one of them things, isn't it? So, Well, it's, for me, it's a reality, I, isn't it? It could happen. It is a reality, yes. And, you know, after the... Always, always, always got nervous. Really nervous. Like, I wouldn't sleep for a week. Yeah. <clears throat> I would sometimes just get in my car and drive around and just try and clear my head and stuff, but after the Warrington fight and I don't know what it was because obviously Carl had had a loss before the Santa Cruz it wasn't the fact that he lost it was just like the nature of the fight it was so so brutal and so hard to watch and I said to him like I can't I want to support you but I literally don't think I could sit through another one like that ever again and once I say something like I have to stick to it (laughs) Like, I know you want to come back, and I'm like, well, but I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Would you go? Would you go to his next one? No, I'm no. not going back. No. No. You you stick and it's to your guns, really, don't you? Really selfish, but I feel like you know what I've done. I've given you. Not that I don't support him anymore. I've given him all the support over the years, but I just I feel like for now I need to look after myself a wee bit. I don't think I could deal with something like that again. I can tell you first hand experience. Um, two years ago, yesterday, I got the call up to the UFC so UFC Liverpool was on and I was the second fight in and it was like home girl everyone screaming for me gone in I've got choked out unconscious fitting on the floor and my mum was just like well I mean how do you watch that when it's your own child that's what I mean and this is something that I don't take on do you know what I mean I'm like oh mum it's not about you it's about me and then I think Fuck now, if I swapped roles, and this is why yeah. I wanted to speak to you, do you know, just to be like, because when your mum's telling you, it's more like she's nagging you, do you know what I mean? But to hear it from someone exactly. else, it's like, well, exactly. is it? I know. So when people say to me, like, will your kids ever box? I'm like, nah, I hope in hell. 
no, not a chance. I don't care. They can train till the cows come home, but they're yeah. not boxing. Yeah, we'll get <laughs> we'll get them into jiu jitsu. I was speaking to Leah. I was like, um, next year when we've got our money sorted, shall we open a gym in Belfast? And she's like, hundred percent, because the plane to Belfast from Liverpool is twenty minutes and it's thirty pounds. <laughs> I was, oh, like, yeah. I was like, Leah, I'll, I'll, just, I I'll just come over three days a week and teach. You can have three days a week and teach. And she was like, yeah, we will. Sure, you could do something like that in Liverpool as well. Yeah, that- yeah, but um, my I just let my coach keep his gym because I'll always coach under oh, them. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. She, she actually has, I think she was teaching, what was it, you, her self-defence up in Hoglass where I grew up. Yeah, and um, where else does she, is a Queen's University. Oh, does she do it there? She as well? does it there. Yeah. When I come okay. over and train, I go. I'll teach the classes for you, so you can have a rest. Cause she drives about nine million hours a week, doesn't she? No, I can't so I'm like, yeah. I'll teach when I come over, and she's like, nice one, just sitting there with a coffee, just just recording <laughs> it for her Instagram. But oh, it, I know, yeah. And um, what I was gonna say to you, in terms of fight comps, so I've noticed Carl goes away for them every now and then, doesn't he? Doesn't stay doesn't stay at home for them what's that like for the kids what's that like for you because I imagine it's not just the six weeks sometimes he, he trains with Jamie Moore in uh, Manchester trains, now, doesn't he yeah. trains in Manchester yeah with Jamie and Nigel so it's usually about a 12 12 weeks he likes to do now it used to be a bit longer but he's, he's getting older now and he usually does about 12 so for the do you know what for the kids they've been born into it they're used to it for them, it's just the way their life is. Do you know yeah. what I mean? There's people out there, like we have friends who, you know, the daddy works on the rigs and the mummy stays at home. He goes to work for two weeks and comes home for, for people. Or there's people in the army. Yeah. It's just their life. Yeah, so it it's is, actually yeah. been, it's been more confusing for them having him home this whole lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he's always away now, isn't he, doing bits with like Chris and that? He's just never ever home. So him and Rossa, our wee boy, are just at war 24-7 because Rossa thinks he's the man of the house. Does he? Yeah. Yeah, like, and it's so bad. He'll kind of like tell him to do something. Rossa will be like, ask me nicely. <laughs> 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 so there's like a bit of a role reversal going on the now. hierarchy's changing isn't it yeah I know yeah. so they're looking forward to him going away again I think but what's it like for you I'm used to it I'm oh, well yeah. used to it. I mean yeah. you've been doing it since she was a bambino since we met since we met and you know yeah. what it's a good thing for marriage absence yeah. makes the heart grow fonder and it really really does yeah but that time apart is it's, you look forward to seeing each other. You're yeah. happy when you see each other. We make the most of our time together all the time. And yeah. good. Has he done many camps with you being at home before? Because I'm sure I watched a documentary once and he was training in in Ireland or in Northern Ireland. Or no, it, no. it might have been a fight week, maybe just. Maybe, yeah. I think it was. He was on the running machine just singing his head off to like Stevie Wonder or something. Oh, in our in our old house. Yeah. yeah. No, I think I think that was maybe just something yeah it must have been the fight week or something like that have you ever had to so i know when fight week's coming and it's time to make the weight and i'm like i'm getting low when i first i've been in relationships they like they don't kind of get it right so like say me and Paige used to go the pictures when i'm in fight week and stuff she'd still sit there eating popcorn and i'd be like oh my god like it'd do me in but like my mum knows and my nan knows like you can't have chocolate in the house because I'll just come down at two o'clock in the morning and just like eat the nut jar and all the tellers and stuff. Like, are you are you aware of like of the stuff that you need to do to help him in order to, to like make weight and stuff? Or to, uh, yeah, to... I, do. Uh, I think I'm getting better and you know he'll usually spend fight week in his hotel because he has so much media and stuff to do so we'll, we'll not have meals or anything like that together right. it's always him him and his team and Jamie is quite good that way because he's a fighter and he knows what it's like to make weight so he'll yeah. actually eat whatever Carl's eating well yeah at the same time as Carl's eating it you know just as that support yeah. now I think he goes to his room and has a couple of Mars bars after but yeah uh, <laughs> yeah like I do that it's I do that with yeah. I do that with Liam McCourt. Anyone who whose fight week it is, I cut weight with them, 
but yeah. f- fucking the other way around do they fuck do that with me all my coaches have burgers and chips because we're fighting in America all the time oh so, that's cruel so, so they're scranning in front of me and then last time I fought in Boston Leah McCourt must have gone and had about 18 pastries in three days and she just kept coming back with like like powdered sugar on her face and that and I was like where have you been <laughs> just getting fatter and fatter every minute <laughs> yeah have you ever had to see him make weight before? Because I know he's he's a little bit like me and he cuts weight the same way that I do. And, and what most professional boxers do now, they don't run it off, they sweat it off, don't they? Have you ever yeah. seen one of them sessions yeah. go down? Yeah. How yeah. did you feel about that? Uh, it was pretty awful because it was the worst ever one. Remember the time, um, what was his name? Gutierrez, and Andres Gutierrez fell in the shower the day before the fight. Oh. I think it was the day before the fight. No, but he so still made he, weight though, didn't he? <clears throat> to Carl still make weight? He missed it by a pound, but he was he was nine pound heavy that morning. So he lost eight, and he physically, he was in like a roasting bath. He had ran, he had, he had skipped, he had done everything. He, they were wrapping things around him and stuff. Yeah. And he just physically couldn't lose this pound. And it got to the point where his coach at the time just said, you know, fuck it, just take the fine and, and let's go and weigh in. Yeah. And he did. And I mean, he got ripped apart. He got ripped to shreds because he didn't make the weight. It wasn't the fight, wasn't for the title or whatever that it was meant to be for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but people didn't know what he had already put himself through to try and make that weight. Yeah, they just don't see that either, yeah. So don't see it and don't get me wrong it should have been done sooner but I think I don't know what happened or whatever but I think something went wrong in the last few days because you can you can sometimes the body just doesn't react the way that you want it to react yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean and I like salts and all this here crap that people would never <laughs> understand if you're trying to because I don't understand it either yeah, yeah. So, um the thought they were on target and and they just didn't happen didn't work yeah yeah oh god they I'm in my mum's now and there's been a few times like I've had to cut between six and ten pounds the night before and for a girl to do that's like harder for a girl isn't it yeah I I mean and like my mum cries like and everyone's around me's crying and I'm like you need to fucking pull it together (laughs) do you know what I mean because I'm like I'm I'm in bits myself yeah it's not a nice thing it's just awful and just one of those things though it's part of the fight game isn't it it is it is post fighting or looking t- more towards the future what are you looking at because the kids are going to be able enough where you don't have to look after them all day when lockdown's finished and carl's only got a few fights left will you be turning to little miss criminal justice or, or what are you i don't know this is the thing i don't know i don't know whether to study again to work i don't know whether to try and you know work with Carl and maybe we, me and him could do something in the community where we could both put our brains together and help you know people in um, disadvantaged, disadvantaged communities yeah you know help you, them you sort of got such such trajectory and you can reach so many people and like you say you coming from yeah. Catholic uh, and him coming from Protestant background and you've got the ability to bring them together I think yeah. that should be something that you should use, and like even if boxing was the tool to do so, do you know what I yeah. mean? And I mean, you could easily mix the boxing with what I want to do. You know, helping kids who may be stuck in systems right now, who may end up stuck in the systems their whole life. Um, Carl could use boxing as a way to help them out of it, or encourage them out of it, or at least try to. So. I think if we stick our heads together uh, over the next few years, we could come up with something and try and just have a positive impact on Belfast. Positive impact there? <laughs> positive impact. <laughs> positive. <laughs> I, I try my best Irish accent, Northern Irish all the time, and Leah's like, you're so shit. And I was like, I didn't think I was. And she's like, no, no, you're the worst. And I think, no. well, you try and do a Scouse accent, you can't even, so fuck off. But I, I have the broadest Belfast accent. Leah is so well spoken compared to me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not like. But she's just used like when me and her have media. I'm like fucking hell. How much do you have to do? Because I just do like the main ones, but she just gets everyone. Like Northern Ireland love her. 
Like, yeah. Ulster Telly, yeah. love it out there. Like, she's always taking Isabella on the telly, and I'm thinking... I know. <laughs> are we, are we all kids around the cameras and stuff? Is it just normal for them to always, because they've always well, been in front of it? Well, they've never been brought on in a way to, like, ask to speak or anything. They've just been sort of... There's been a couple of documentaries. They'll be running around in the background just naturally anyway. Mm. So... <sighs> I don't know if they were if they were brought on the news or something like that. I don't know if they would like it. <laughs> uh, do you like? Are you fine about that? Them being on the telly and stuff? Because I suppose they're all over social media, aren't they? The, yeah, I don't mind it because you know what? It's um, at the start it was a bit funny, and Carl was like, you know, they're a part of my life, and I want he wants to document his life and his career and stuff, and they are a part of it, so it's fine. Yeah, absolutely fine. What are you drinking? It looks like Iron Brew. It's a, uh, it is Iron Brew, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you up to this weekend? Then they are all me big, big, big questions for you to be honest. But I know, um, I know you've got ten sheets of notes that you've got on um on the piece of paper there. Is there anything? Is there anything that you want to talk about? Or mm. want to ask anything about? Nah, not really, no. No? I think we've talked about it all. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about music. Okay, right, music. So I normally talk about coffee and music. Do you drink coffee? No, get it. Oh, you just stick to what? the Magnus, babes. You just stick to the Magnus. No, I hate it, but usually on a normal day. So Carl has a coffee machine. Him and Stephen Morty trains with are really into coffee. Get these coffees delivered from different countries and all but um so usually i don't touch it but when carl's away training do you ever hit that mid-afternoon slump at like three or four o'clock that's when i start doing homeworks with the kids so i'll always just make an instant coffee and like knock it back as quick as i can just like shot it like it's tequila boom yeah. <laughs> just to get through the rest of the day yeah <laughs> um and music so Music for me helps me every day in terms of like meditating, giving me fucking energy to go for a run or the gym. Like I've got an electric scooter that I ride to the gym, right, Christine? And I'll have these headphones on and you'll see me screaming, like revving my thing <laughs> like that. And then I'll like go past the bus and people are just buzzing off me, like recording me, like, it's me ball on a scooter. And I'm like, I'm like, hey, did I love it on the dark side tap? And I'm going, Shan, hold me into my heart. <laughs> Honestly, like, I couldn't give a flying fuck, do you know what I mean? That's what I do in the car, but when you're in your car, you don't think anyone can see you. Yeah. And I remember, like, what, we live in this really quiet, like, nice area. And I remember one Sunday morning, just, like, flying down the road, I had my music on, it was, like, DMX or something. <laughs> This, thing, this guy was just walking down the road. I think he was literally just coming out of a party, and I was yeah. like, DMX and he went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> what? Hey, what was the first album you bought as a kid? What? You're not gonna believe it. Don't tell it me was... it's fucking Spice Girls. No, no, I I never was into music, right? Yeah. And Eminem came out when I was 11. I don't know where I heard him or how I convinced my parents to buy me this album. Yeah. But it was was a Slim Shady LP or Marshall, Marshall, Marshall Mathers. Mathers. Was it the one with the blue, like with the blue where he's on the end of a, like sitting on the end of something with the moon at the top? Um, that's a Slim Shady LP, isn't is it? it? I've got them all on vinyl, but I can't remember either. I can't remember which one came first, but that was my first album. Was it? Yeah that I ever asked for and I remember like playing it and then my daddy was like what the fuck's he singing it <laughs> was like I'm Slim Shady yes I'm the real <laughs> no what was it it was a my, my name is isn't it hi I my name it. is I remember being in like year four and I remember or year five maybe so that's like P5 for you isn't it and I remember I was like whoa and he just took over the world like that didn't he and everyone just was like yeah, I just loved them. So after a while, it was, they were like, right, you're not allowed to listen to this no more. But then my daddy listened to it for a while and he found it quite funny. So then we used to pick my mummy up from mass on a Sunday and he would turn it off full blast in the car park and stay in the shop. <laughs> would she be dying of shame? <laughs> and she'd be like, <laughs> 
fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> do you listen to are you Spotify, iMusic, or Amazon Music Gear? No, I'm simple. This is the most. Don't technology. tell me that. You, don't tell me you just oh, listen to music off I, YouTube. I buy CDs and put them in the car. Do you? Old school. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, or just stick YouTube on my phone. I suppose yeah. you're with the kids all the time, though, aren't you? So I just I need to catch up on technology. I'm about five years behind. Oh, here you <clears throat> right, I've got one last question for you, and then you can carry on with your drink. Uh, has there ever been a time someone's give you an inspirational quote or a really important saying that's absolutely changed your life because? Um, say my quote that I always go off is um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and when I was told that because I was shit at everything but I give me 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 whole self to everything I did I could I could walk away feeling fulfilled about that do you know what I mean if you yeah. could if you if a kid was struggling in in the system now and you had to give him one thing that was going to change him from going out being a knobhead or going out changing the world what would you say to him um, and you can well, sit on that for a minute. I'm not going to rush yet because it, it's... It's probably not that inspirational, but I always like the saying, you live and you learn, because you do. You know, you think you know it all when you're like 16, 17, 18, and you don't know anything. You haven't got a fucking clue. <laughs> I haven't got it all day. Like, I'm 32 and I still just don't have a clue. And <laughs> still, you look like you've learn. got it together, though. Still learning stuff every day, still learning about life and about people and and that's it really. Like you live your life and you learn as you go along. Get Carl on and ask him what his one is. I'll get him. Carl, you're wanted. I'll take the earphones out so he can speak or will I give them to him? No, you can yeah, take them out if you want. See it is coming to the end now. What's your profound quote? Do you want to come and say one? Come and say one now, lads. How you doing, Molly? I'm all right, lads. Are you okay? I'm all right. Not so, bad. I was saying to your boss lady, if you could give a quote to someone to change the course of their life and to inspire them, or what did the coach ever say to you where you're like losing in a fight and just pulling out the bag and come back? Because I said to her, mine is hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And she's well, and she said you live in your lane. Yeah, I like both of them. I don't know. I've been asked this a few times, like about favorite quotes. I don't really. I don't know if I have one. I have very, very sorry, Vanny Vitti Vici tattooed on my chest. What does that mean? Which means I came, I saw, I conquered, and that was uh, Julius Caesar declared it. Whenever. Yeah, so that's right. yours then, isn't it? But I got it because I don't know why I got it. I only I got it when I was about. Was you drunk and I an appy <laughs> with no, the boys? It wasn't one of the ones, but it was, I, was about, I was about 17 and I hadn't done a fucking thing. So, like, it wouldn't have made much sense at the time, but lucky enough, I've won a few things, so it, it makes sense now. Yeah, but you knew where you was going, didn't you? Well, yeah, I, I think I did. I hoped anyway, I hope. Yeah. Put one ear in the in area so she can hear me as well. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, one ear each. So I'm gonna give you my best goodbye in Northern Irish. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready? <clears throat> right, guys. For everyone listening, it's Christine calling the meatball, and at says nigh. At says nigh. Was that good? Was it any good? <laughs> Yo. Just <laughs> Say, say, say this. Go. Tra, guys. Tra, guys. Have you seen um have you seen on Insta that woman Chanel where she goes she lost uh, the party? Uh, Chanel Do you know her? No, but I done this charity run the other day and she took the party Chanel <laughs> and she done laps with the party. <laughs> I swear to God. And she was bladded. I'm sure she had like a bottle of gin in her hand as well. Yeah, so it was quality. It was quality, but um Thanks for coming on because I know you don't normally do this and it's late and it's a Friday night. And Carlos, whenever you need me on your podcast, that's not Chris's. I'll be on. I have to get on, Molly. And see, you're, you're, this is the first one that 
she's ever agreed to any anything. She's done a couple of wee things for like documentaries for me, and it's been. And she's done one for a girl. You know, Ruth Gorman like had to really twist her arm to do it. But, but you know what? Like someone who's got a story of like who give their own career up to be selfless to be, to raise children to support their husband so he can go on and feel fulfilled and fucking ch- change everyone's life. It's next level, and I just I said to her. I'd love to see what it's like from the other person's point of view because I I don't know if I could do that. I couldn't throw my career away for the person who I'm, who's my soulmate. I couldn't. I'm, I'm, and I'm forever grateful, and she knows that. Even though I'll say it to her, and she 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 pretends she doesn't care, but I am <laughs> I am very very grateful. Like we we tried to get her on to my own podcast to talk about it. She she won't do it, but um. I got the, I got the gold. <laughs> What? Exclusives. <laughs> see what, see what she's done for me, and allowed. Like I, I wouldn't have been able to do, do it all. Even yeah. half of what I've done because she's just looked after the kids. Even before the kids were born, you know what I mean. It was like, just she, she was always in my ear and giving me good advice and and helped me along the way. And I had a I had a talk with her once when I was an amateur still, and I got beat by a guy who. Shouldn't have really been beating me, and I was about to pack it in, like pack boxing in, and I was going to do start thinking about which trade and all I could do. Oh, was you thinking I'm going to have to be a carpenter? Yeah, not that there's yeah. anything wrong with carpenters, no, but like, something like that, yeah. And um, she says to me, I got home after I got beat by this guy, and I was crying, and I went to her house and was crying to her, and and she kind of said, I was messing about, I wasn't training properly, and. Like I was kind of trim hard for two weeks, and she says to me, "Just focus, like have a have a go, and make sure you do it properly next year for the next All Ireland." It was, and I drew the guy in the All Ireland next year, and I stopped him when I when I was focused, and that was a big, massive turning point for me, and it was it was all down to her because I was like I was that close to packing it all in. Hey, do you know what your greatest quote should have been? Behind every great man is a great woman. That's a, that's a good one. So that's, true. That should be it. Yeah, get yeah. get that tattoos on your on your forehead. Yeah, tattoos for the chair. Right. Thanks very much for coming on. I really appreciate it. And when lockdown is over, I'll be over for a few magnas. I promise. Oh, you better be, and we'll oh, be coming to watch you fit too.